Hey guys, welcome to another MATLAB video. Um, today we're going to be looking at how to tweak VSEO uh, presets and how to make them really uh, customized and work for you. Okay, so here's a before and after. Before and after and before and after. So, um, I'm really sorry that it's been such a long time since we uh, I've done one of these videos, I've had a crazy summer, I don't know about you guys, um, I'm a wedding photographer mainly, um, so I'm, my summers get really, really busy, um, but we're back. I've been very fortunate to shoot a lot of destination weddings across Europe this year um, and next, so uh, yeah, a lot of travelling, but we're back, uh, we're ready to go, and we're going to look at VSEO tweaks here, okay? So, uh, we're going to go back to our original, and let's have a look through these presets. So this is Camera Raw, uh, if you use Lightroom, it's really similar, although this in Lightroom is far better organised, um, it's a little bit of a mess when you jump into Camera Raw. Um, just to clarify, I'm using, I've got pack 1 and pack 6 open here, um, so that's why there's a, a whole bunch of different ones. I'm just going to just apply a few different pack 1 um, presets real quick, just to show you the general idea of what you get. can be quite harsh sort of images, it's quite a nice little one. In fact, this one is the one that we're going to be looking at today, and base everything off. So just nice, different sorts of presets that you can use, um, but out of the box quite often they're not really what we want. So let's just go back to the original. And um, Like I said, we'll, we'll use um, Portrait 160 Plus, I quite like it, as um, it works really well, it's got a nice look to it. Okay, so, first and foremost we'll come into our um, main panel, basic panel here. Um, again, this is the same as Lightroom, so just work the same. I'm quite happy with the exposure and when I'm looking at exposure I'm looking at the skin tones just to see if these brightest sections are blown out okay um, and they're not they're, they're okay at the moment so we'll look at highlights highlights again I'm fairly pleased with those but you'll notice there's quite a lot of shadow here and I'm not too keen on how heavy that is so we'll just uh, raise that a bit yeah, maybe, maybe about 50 there, um, looks really nice. Um, what I'm going to do is, this will become a little clearer later, I'm going to knock the whites down a little more than they already are. And that the whites is just the very, very sort of highest part of the highlights. Um, and it just brings them in a little bit and gives that film sort of look. Okay, and then our blacks, I'm just going to push those a little higher as well, um, just to bring out some of that detail in the shadow areas there. Okay, What I always like to do, you'll notice how we've, we've um, lost a lot of the harsh contrast in this image now, but, and what I like to do is I like to bring a little bit of that back with the clarity slider about there. Um, that's good. By the way, I'm holding down shift. You'll notice I'm going up in tens here. Um, I'm holding down shift and the up arrow, or the down arrow, um, and that just does it in increments of ten instead of just one. Um, I tend to like to make fairly big changes and then I'll micro adjust if I need to. So the next one is vibrance. Um, generally, I, I generally go to 30 straight away to see how that looks. Um, that's quite nice. Okay, so basics panel is, well, basic. Um, we're not doing anything spectacularly complicated there. Um, just maybe it's lifting the shadows. It's probably the main thing that we're trying to do. Next thing we'll do, we'll come to the tone curve. The parametric curve, a lot of this curve stuff is what really makes VSEO work. Now the point curve here is where if you hit the fade presets in the preset panel, it will affect this curve and it will affect the darks down here and the highlights here. Okay, so we'll just come to the parametric curve first. What I like to do with the parametric curve is almost add a little contrast underneath the point curve. So the highlights, I, I, I changed the whites in the basics panel, and I'll leave those there. Um, so I could do it even less, but I quite like it where it is. So we'll we'll do we'll leave that there. The lights, however, just want to, like I said, I just want to bring a bit of contrast in. Could even go up to twenty. I think I'll leave it at ten for now. We can always come back. Darks again. I just want to lift a little bit of these shadows, but being careful. And the actual um, shadow, the darkest parts of the shadows, I'll just bring down just to add that little bit of contrast because what we'll now do is we'll come in here 
and to give that sort of film grain look, sorry, film grade look, not grain, grade, we're going to come in and we're going to use these little points at either end. And you'll notice if you hit the fade um, preset in the toolkit, which is, I've got Nikon preset and everything here, which is these ones here, they will wildly affect this. Okay, but we don't want to wildly affect it, we just want to make it a little bit, you know, tweak it a little bit. So, I'm going to just bring that up to about 25 ish, and we'll come to the highlights here and probably bring that down to yeah, about 240. Looks good to me. Okay, so that is how we edit VSEO preset to get rid of some of the harshness out of the box and to um, just really customize it to our own preferences. So, big thing that we're now going to look at is HSL and split toning panels. Again, these are exactly the same in Lightroom, um, just in slightly different places. Um, HSL is just looking at the individual color channels, um, and the saturation is probably the easiest one to understand. So if we look at the greens here, and we just drop the saturation of the greens, we'll see that just the greens, obviously, disappear. So let's undo that. Now, something I like to do is play with the greens a little bit, um, and just you'll notice that if we look at this green slider here, the hue go it, it goes from green to sort of yellow, and I quite like the yellow side of things. So I'll just drop that a little bit more towards yellow. It's starting to look a touch on the lumin luminous side, um, a little bit crazy. So then I'll come into the saturation panel, and just drop that ever so slightly, and I quite like the greens looking that sort of color. Um, that's just personal preference. If you guys just play with this um, and play with the different sliders, you'll you'll get to find out which ones that you like. And they're different for each image. Obviously, if there was no grass in this image or any trees or anything, the greens probably wouldn't make much of a difference. Um, for example, purples. Um, what I quite often do is I just wing it all the way to the edge and see if it makes any difference. And you can see there in her top that it makes quite a big difference on the purple side and you, you, that's that's the way you can sort of play with and test whether you like a particular channel to play with um, so just play with these I tend not to touch luminance hue and saturation are the biggest things one thing I would say is look at the oranges um, because the skin tones that VSEO create can be really weird in fact most of them are very very orange and they need to be reduced um, that's probably one of the big things I see people ask about the SEOs. How do I get normal skin tones? But the orange is a big one. This image doesn't suffer too much from the issue just because of where it was taken. It's quite a cool of light that we were working with. Um, but just to knock that down, maybe there's a little bit. Don't go overboard because you can make people look ill because you just drain all the color out of their skin. So that's the one thing I would say definitely do. If you're scared of, whoops, if you're scared of playing with these, that's absolutely fine. But just knock the oranges back ever so slightly and you'll, you'll notice a big difference. Okay, so split toning is another one that I like. Split toning is simply um, adding a little color, whichever color you want in the spectrum to the highlights, and a little color, whichever color in the spectrum you like, to the shadows. And it's real simple, and then you can increase the strength of that in the saturation. Big thing that I like to do is just give that little bit of warmth, so I quite often put the yellows for the highlight, and you'll notice there's no difference. I've just changed that to 60, which is pretty much dead on yellow, and there's no difference to the image because I haven't increased the saturation yet. So if I increase the saturation, we'll start to see a big difference. And obviously if we put it all the way to the top, you just get huge amounts of yellow, but mainly in the highlights. Okay, obviously we're not going to do that. I tend to sit around, I test 10 first. It's a little bit too much for me on that one. So about eight looks great. And again, we'll put the shadows to 60. And the saturation for the shadows will just take a little bit. So maybe it's two. Um, you don't want to do loads, I'll just quickly show you what it looks like all the way at the extreme. Just looks awful obviously, but just to give you an idea of what's going on. Um, you could also just completely change this and make the shadows quite blue. Um, I don't know if you can see there, the shadows get quite a bit cooler. And that can be quite nice, and that's why it's called split toning. Because you can actually split the uh, colour balance in the, between the shadows and the highlights being different. And the balance I tend to leave, um, but again play with that, see what you get. Okay, so uh, lens corrections um, and grain. Grain is something that is um, naturally in a lot of the VSEO presets and can look really nice. 
a lot of people will set this to zero and actually add their grain in Photoshop, specifically in Alien Skin Exposure afterwards. If you want to know a little more about that, drop me a comment in the comments section and uh, maybe I'll do a, a tutorial about that as well later. But for now, the, the grain in Camera Roar and Lightroom is, is okay. So camera calibration is the last panel we'll look at. And this really is very, very simple. And probably the only thing I ever change is just the tint of the shadows and sometimes knock that up to magenta, which can look really, really cool. I'm not sure I quite like it for this image, um, so I'll probably knock that down, but leave it where it was at minus two. Um, and again, you can play with these sliders. You'll notice that most of them are on zero most of the time, um, but do feel free to play with those because they can make some really interesting effects as well. And it's this is all really just to personalize your VSEO preset. So hopefully these match. Um, yes, they do here. Yeah. This is the original again, and we end up with this um, at the end of it. And that's based off Portra 160. So, kill some of the harsh contrast and increase the vibrance with the basics panel. Um, create a little bit of fade with the point curve and add a little bit of contrast underneath of that fade with the parametric curve. Make the colors really stand out for you um, with the split toning and the HSL panels. Um, and these are probably the most powerful ones to get the look that you want um, and maybe just tweak the uh, shadow tint. Great guys, thanks so much for watching. That was the VSEO tweaks video. If you'd like access to more tutorials ranging from things like Photoshop all the way through to how to get more Facebook likes, head over to matlab.com forward slash PS. The link is below um, and sign up for that email list there.